Hello, so I read a strange and stubborn endurance by Fars Meadows and I have some thoughts. But first let's get into the bio. Many a reader longing for a sense of homecoming in the realm of romantic fantasy will find it in a strange and stubborn endurance. Zachary Carey. Stolen me as soon as say a caged bird can be stolen by the sky. Velasen Vin Arlo never planned to marry at all, let alone a girl from a from neighboring Tysena, which I'm probably pronouncing wrong. When an ugly confrontation reveals his preference for men, Vel fears he's ruined the diplomatic union before it can even begin. But while his family is ready to disown him, the Tysena and Roy had a different solution for Vel to marry his former intended brother instead. Katari Adora always knew he might end up in a political marriage, but his son Bafato Bethato to a man from Walia, where such relationships are forbidden, comes as a shock. With an unknown faction willing to kill to end their new alliance, Vel and Kay have no choice but to trust each other. Survival is one thing, but love, as both will learn, is quite another. Byzantine politics, less sexual energy, and a queer love story that is by turns sweet and sultry, Father's Me- Father's Meadows is a strange and stubborn endurance is an explanation of exploration of gender identity and self love. It is a book that will live in your head long after you turn the last page. Which is correct. I think about this book a lot. I I do not shut up about this book while reading it. Like, oh my god. At the publisher's request, this title is being sold without digital rights management software. DRM applied, which I still did only understanding how that's a thing. But anyways, why this book lives in my and probably other people's heads and free. It is but before before any of that, um this book was part of my Easy Cat Fable recommended and just yeah, when I finished this first book I had to read the second. But anyways, my thoughts about the first book, Strange and Stubborn Endurance. So heads up, if you're planning on reading this book, there is a very descriptive triggering rape and then self-harm scene in the very beginning. So if you're not mentally prepared for that, don't read for that and don't read that and you, sh- and you should probably, you can probably skip that. Like it's implied it after it, but it's not like as descriptive after those scenes. I almost see enough because of that, by the way. But um Killick, who is one of the main sort of villains, gets come with being a rapist, basically Brandon. Be- and how this happens is so Katari and Vela are sort of like interrogating him kind of. And so Killick doesn't know that Katari kind of knows Valian. So, when Killick was, like, being, like, a narcissistic like, guilt tripping, like, trying to, like, get Phil to cheap, Katari goes, really? Just nonchalantly. Boy, that is husband material. <laughs> Someone who is suddenly ready to kick your ass? What? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Like, and he had, also, Killick attempted to, like, blackmail Bill and like just yeah he is he's a freaking what's the word he's a cocky bastard basically and but the plus and but at some at some point he dies, which, I mean, I'm happy but not happy, like, he's an asshole and, like, he doesn't deserve to live, but also, I want him to fucking suffer. You have to understand. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Like, they are just, they are just perfect for each other, like, when they so, like, like, the vibes are there, they just love each other, it's just amazing, oh my god, like, how they, like, of trauma and everything together, it's just like, it is, they are, 
story is husband material. They both are like husband material, one way or another. It's amazing. And no, I will not, not do the hand thing because it belongs here. But yeah. But at the end of the book, we find out that Katari's sister, I'm not even going to say her name because screw her, was, basically, was also a villain. And she used magic. So, yeah, and she dies, which. How is she acts? It's just so childish, and that's coming from me. Like, oh my god. Like, you're doing this for something you were getting, and now you're not gonna get it because you're a fucking political idiot. And yes, the cat agrees. You agree? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know what it You agree. You agree being a political idiot when you were getting what you wanted all along is wrong. You agree. Yep, that's her agreement, everybody. I'm laughing because I know I'm keeping at the fuck in. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> like, I honestly enjoyed this book. Like, I just couldn't put it down. And just the cover is just beautiful. Like, cover out. Not cover. Color or crowd color. It's just beautiful. Um, yeah. There's another in the series called All the Hidden Paths, book two. And the bio is the follow up for. The follow up for Fall Meadows is A Strange and Stubborn Endurance. All the Hidden Paths is a sultry, political, and romantic fantasy exploring gender, sexuality, identity, and self love. When the plot against them foiled in the city of Haycut High, which I'm probably pronouncing wrong, in safe hands, n newlywed and tentative lovers Felicia and Takari have just begun to test the waters of their relationship. But the wider political ramifications of their marriage are still playing out across two nations. And all too soon, they summon enough to Titanus capital city. Ki. Ki. Han. I'm. It, okay, it's spelled Q I dash X I H A N. I am sorry. To present themselves to a small rock. With Katari newly invested as his grandmother's heir. And Valesson's old ghost gnawing at his heels, the little piece they've managed to find is swiftly put to the test. Kay's recent losses have left him wrapped with grief and guilt, while Will struggles to with the disconnect between well Will, Will struggles with the disconnect between instincts that have kept him safe in secrecy and what an open life requires of him now. Pursued by unknown assailants and a Kay X's Pursued by unknown assailants and with key X's court faction jockeying for power, Theo and K must use all the skills at their disposal to not only survive but thrive. For there's more than one way to end an alliance and more than one person who wants to see them fail. And they will resort to murder if needed. When I was reading the preview for this book, I, because it was called Southern Saint Endurance, I already knew I was going to hate this character, some of these characters. I already knew, and I wasn't wrong. Like, he's in, Vale is, Vale is in a, an entirely different country. Why are you so concerned for the fuck he marries? I don't get that. Like, no political reason can be that important. Like, nothing. Like, that's just... Why is Radia so fucked up? And also, my general also other person, why is Radia this fucking homophobic? Like, what, what the fuck happened? <laughs> like... You doing this for what? Like... It's so dumb. Like, grow up. Like... And like blackmailing someone to and threatening someone, like their family says so they have to do it, is so fucked beyond. Like oh my god, like you can't just like, you can't, you can't just be like, go like, cry to your pillow or something like a normal person, instead of like, this. 
Um, yeah, those are my thoughts of the Tef Te Tefena, I'm sorry, Chronicles by Foz Meadows. I don't know if there's a third book. I haven't seen any, but like, I would be heavily invested in this. this I am just heavily invested in this relationship, and I hope there's more. But, um, yeah. If you're interested, I will leave links to everything in the description. And just, yeah. Good luck with everything, and just have a good February.